Welcome back to People in Profit. Before we begin today's episode, I want to remind and encourage you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Not only does it help us deliver the content you enjoy most, but it also helps others to discover this podcast. You can find more information and a link to review in the show notes. Thank you. Now let's dive into today's topic. Today's topic is near and dear to my heart. And what it is, is why home buyers need a trusted title team. Why title insurance is so important to a home buyer is it prevents anyone from being able to take a portion or all of the buyer's home away from them. Simplest way to say that. When you close on your home, and we're gonna be talking today to buyers that are closing on their home that are getting a loan in order to buy their home. When you close on your home, you want to own your own com home completely, and the only interest you want anyone to have in your home is the lender that is loaning you money to buy the home. You get title insurance, which is called an owner's title insurance policy. Again, it gives you the insurance that no one can take all or a portion of your home away from you. The lender gets the insurance that no one else has lent you money or no one else has financial interest in the home, that they are first with their financial interest. It secures their loan that they gave you to buy your home, and it ensures them that again, they'll have no loss to their lien priority. No one can come in front of them and say they're owed money before that lender is. What could go wrong? Well, insurance is an important, very important because of the things that can go wrong, right? If everything goes well, if you're driving in your car and you don't get in a car accident, then your car insurance isn't nearly as important as it is to you when you get in a car accident. The difference between automobile insurance and an owner's title insurance policy is automobile insurance, it insures against risks that come in the future. So just in case I get in a car accident, I have this insurance. With your home, you close on your home, your deed that gives you ownership to the home gets recorded in the public records and title insurance says, anything that happened before today, you are insured that nothing happened that again gives anybody but you interest in your home. So that's what's important to understand. But again, what could go wrong? Let's say you buy your home from an individual and let's say that individual, the seller, he received ownership from the home because his mom and dad passed away. And let's say that on your door knocks his sister and says, I don't know how my brother sold this home to you because my parents passed away and I was in the will also. And you have your deed, right? You were given your keys, you paid your money, and now sister is knocking on your door. You tell sister to go see the title company that gave you or that, you know, you purchased the insurance, the title insurance from. And then it becomes the title company's job to investigate, to see whether sister actually owned the property with brother. And then it's our problem to work that out. So that could go wrong. Also, people in the past would have had taxes to pay. Were all the taxes paid in the past? If they weren't paid, then again, you're going to the title company saying, why is the tax collector telling me that monies are owed to them for this property? We had the closing, you issued a title insurance policy, my taxes aren't due until next year, why is this happening? Please solve this problem, title company. People in the past that owned the property could have had debts that they didn't pay. Debts that they didn't pay, that their creditors attached those debts as liens or judgments against the property. If they weren't paid off and they actually were liens against the property, then that money is owed to those creditors and it's attached to your property. In that instance, again, not your creditors, not your liens, but yes, your property with title insurance, you get to turn those creditors over to the title insurer, the title company that handled your closing. So these are a couple of reasons of what title insurance is, why it's so important, and what could go wrong. Simply put, there are things that can go wrong. Getting title insurance makes them not your problem. It makes them 
the title company's problem and the title insurer's problem. And again, I'm being very vague here and I'm speaking very broadly here intentionally because your goal today, my goal today is to have you walk away with an idea of what all this means. When you're in your closing, you need to be talking to the professionals, looking at the commitment, which is the commitment to give you insurance once you own the property to make sure all the issues are resolved on that. But we're not here today to teach title commitments. Again, I'm here today to give you a broad idea. I want you to know also that the company that I work for, Fidelity National Financial, we are a Fortune 200 company. What does that mean to consumers? That we are proud, we are strong financially. We are also number one in the country financially and with our market share. We have the largest claims reserve in the title insurance industry. And again, just a little bit of information without over explaining, we actually have actuaries that come in. An actuary's job is to come in and see historically the financial obligations we have through the dollar amount, right? Of financial obligations we have through the policies that we have written. Also, they look at historically how many policies that are written end up in a claim situation where our company actually needs to pay something out. They take that historical information and they say to us as an underwriter, you need to put X number of dollars in reserves just in case there's a claim in the future, right? So based on historical information of how many policies we've issued, what the dollar amount um, coverage of those policies represents, and the history of the number of claims that we typically see in our industry and the timing of those claims. Are they a year after closing? Are they five years after closing? What's the timing of those claims? And then they create a dollar amount that we need to put into reserves. Our company, Fidelity National Financial, we over-reserve what we're required to, deserve, to reserve. And why do we do that? We want to make sure that we always have the money that's needed set aside to protect the people that we insure. And I think that that's important for you all to understand. And again, I'm really, I have to work really hard to just not go on and on in some real detail. But I think it's also important to understand if you go knock on my title operation door, you could knock on a Fidelity National title door. I also have some Chelsea title companies under my leadership. But the insurer, the underwriter, the insurance provider in those two instances are Fidelity National title, right? or Chicago title because Fidelity National Financial owns several underwriters. Again, it's important for you to understand that the underwriter is the insurance provider. And in our instance, we are blessed to be owned by the underwriter, which is a Fortune 200 company. How does Fidelity, how do we, how do our operations train our teams to provide excellent customer service. I think it's really important to understand one of the things we do is we build as many efficiencies as we can. And how do we create those efficiencies usually? Or how do we decide or come up with efficiencies? Sometimes we come up with them because a mistake has happened or a process took too long or a customer became unhappy by something. And then we end up with, oh, wait a minute, this is an opportunity to create an efficiency. So where that's concerned, one I can always think of is several years ago, I don't think we were doing the best job at communicating with the buyer, with the seller, with the realtors, with the lender, with the people, the parties, right, in each transaction that we had received a contract and that we were going to be handling it and, and Sally was going to be your processor and, and Brenda was going to be your closer. We didn't do a great job of we received the contract this is who you're going to be dealing with, and this is what you can expect from us. So with that, what did we do? We created a welcome letter, and our welcome letter came out immediately after we received the contract to all the parties in the transaction to say just what I said, which is, thank you so much for the tra transaction. Congratulations on your home sale. Congratulations on your home purchase. And this is what you can expect next. And this is who you'll be dealing with. And this is how you reach us. So that's the purpose for the welcome letter. And what was interesting about that is 
we discovered very quickly that some of our branches maybe wrote that email better than others. So we created another efficiency, which were templates that all of our branches could send. But the trick is, how do you take a template and not make it feel like a template, right? We could also talk today about artificial intelligence. We could talk about technology. How do you utilize technology to its fullest without appearing like you ever call one of those companies where press one, press two, plus press seven, press 10, and you wonder, do they really want to help you, right? So how do you use technology how do you use efficiencies? How do you use templates without creating and looking like you've become cold and sterile and everybody gets the same thing? So we created templates that we felt were still warm. We created templates that we felt still created or needed input, you know, a person to input the information to address Mr. and Mrs. Smith, again, as the seller, Mr. and Mrs. Jones as the buyer. So we really think we did a good job of making our templates feel warm, but creating a standard for all of our offices so they would communicate immediately. As we really began to get more efficient and got some positive feedback on how quickly we would communicate, then we decided, wait a minute, we need more security, right? I just talked about technology. The bigger and bolder technology has gotten, the more need for secure systems. So we have a system called Start In Here. And now we send that welcome letter through Start In Here. And we send it confidentially. We also send it securely, right? And in that secure delivery, we're able to address confidential information that we can send, confidential information that we can receive. And we also, with that, are able to address the secure delivery of the first monies that need to come to us, which is the earnest money deposit. That's the buyer's deposit that they have to pay in order to secure the contract financially, which typically has a three-day turnaround time on it. So we're going to quickly, through Start In Here, communicate confidentially, give our warm, friendly welcome, give our instruction on what happens next, and tell you as the buyer how you'll deliver the earnest money deposit that's required on the contract. And we give mobile deposit instructions as an option, we give wire instructions as an option, and we also give the opportunity for you to overnight or come in with a personal check, a money order, or a cashier's check. But we've been able to streamline streamline our communication securely with customer service as one of our primary touches. And I'll tell you this, that happens through the entire transaction with Fidelity National Title. My goal today was to give you just enough information to whet your t appetite about what happens once you buy your home or once you go under contract to help you understand the process and more than anything, make you realize that choices matter on who is chosen to handle the transaction. Typically in a contract in the state of Florida, seller is typically choosing the title company because as a rule, the contract states that they're going to pay for the buyer's owner's policy. And with that being said, I think it's really important that you understand as a buyer to talk to your real estate professional about who's picking, who's paying, but who are they choosing? And knowing that it's important that you have a comfort level and your real estate professional has a comfort level with who they chose and that you get with the right title company. Thank you again for listening to People and Profit with me, Susan West. Remember to rate and leave a review to tell us how you like the show. Your feedback is truly appreciated and important to us. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram, the reframe underscore FNT, Facebook at the reframe and LinkedIn at the reframe FNT. It's been my pleasure spending this time with you today. I look forward to seeing you next time.